What happened to the healthcare sector in 2023? So first, when we look at healthcare, there are permanent non-cyclical drivers over the long term. Aging populations, technological innovation, and developing markets, they all form our foundation for a positive outlook. In the shorter term, when we look back to 2022 in particular, uh, when we had a bear market in the US, uh, S&P 500, which was down nearly 20%, the healthcare sector was one of the best performing subsectors. Fast forward to 2023, it's been a very, what we would call bifurcated market in which certain sectors have really dominated the relative performance. And even more so within those subsectors, it has been a concentrated across a very a few large number of companies. And this has resulted in healthcare, despite actually having a positive rate of return in 2023, uh, it lagged the market and lagged the S&P uh, by the second most it has done so since the past 30 years. How has HHL navigated this choppy environment? What has set your strategy apart from competitors? We are now in the 10th year of HHL and we have a very structured and proven process on our equity selections. And importantly, we also have a very structured proven process on our active covered call strategy. Look, I think everybody will agree the past four years have been a very challenging environment across the broader markets and healthcare is absolutely not immune to that, in particular in 2023, where it was behind the broader markets. Uh, however, we are delighted during these very challenging environments over the past four years that HHL has earned its uh, position as the top performing healthcare ETF over the one, two, three, and four year periods up to the end of 2023, driven by that active selection and by the option strategy. How have you been able to build a track record of nine consecutive years of monthly distributions? Track records take one thing to establish, and that really is time. Uh, so over the past nine plus years, HHL has paid the same monthly distribution of 5.83 cents per month. Uh, we're very delighted over this long period and long track record that we've established. It has now generated and paid out over $400 million in monthly distribution since its inception. What can we expect from the healthcare sector in 2024? What are the key growth drivers you have pinpointed? So there's a major conference at the start of every year uh, that really brings together a large amount of industry participants, capital markets, uh, and of course, underlying healthcare companies. This has served as a bit of a barometer for the start of the year. Uh, and I think when I take some of the, the feedback from that particular event, the, there is much more optimism towards the sector than there has been uh, over the past couple of years. Um, specifically, we see this in medical devices where um, healthcare utilization trends have moved higher. Uh, and that does tend to be a positive for a number of these companies and areas of, of strong growth within the medical devices. So specifically robotic assisted surgeries that when we look back to 2023, were generally weak during the first half. However, as the, as the year progressed, it became clear that a recovery was starting to take hold. And that's been validated now as we've come through the early parts of 2024 with corporate earnings and corporate communications. And so when we think of, of some of the other bigger trends, I, I think unequivocally for us, uh, the GLP-1 class, the um, often associated as the obesity drugs or weight loss drugs, we think is a genuine game changer for healthcare delivery. And so when we think about the potential opportunities within the this segment, it's not specifically related to weight loss, but rather all of the other types of indications that are now being tested for positive benefits. And so real change came uh, in the third quarter of last year when we received studies showing uh, very, very positive results on areas like cardiovascular benefits. So reductions in things like heart attacks and strokes. So as 2024 uh, progresses, we, we expect we'll continue to get further late stage readouts 
for, on phase three in areas like sleep apnea uh, and amongst many other cardiovascular studies that are being done. Uh, we expect this is likely to be a hundred billion dollar plus market uh, and really has the opportunities not just within the manufacturers and the developers of the drug but also in other areas of testing etc. So um, within that we do think that the, that particular area will have headlines uh, to be positive during the first parts of 2024. When we think about perhaps some of the um, negative areas, one topic that often comes up is politics, especially when we're in an election year. Uh, in my shortest commentary on politics in nine years, uh, I would suggest that the rhetoric is highly subdued, driven by the fact that there has already been a significant number of implemented policy changes, not to mention the challenges of implementing anything uh, draconia that had been proposed perhaps in the 2016 area. So look, with that longer term backdrop, aging populations, technological innovation, uh, developing markets, we couple that with a sector that has relatively strong visibility into their business lines, uh, a very positive sentiment, attractive valuation with some very positive um, uh, technological innovation on drug development and on medical device side. Uh, we also see a sector that has had the second widest relative underperformance to the market in almost 30 years. And so with that backdrop, we really think there's an attractive opportunity as we look out through the 2024 period.